Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about spinal surgery. The majority of lower back discomfort may be addressed without surgery. However, there are situations when spinal surgery is a reasonable or essential treatment option for major musculoskeletal injuries or nerve compression. By the time you decide to undergo back surgery, your doctor has most likely tried a variety of therapies to alleviate your back pain or lower body paralysis. While there is no certainty that this procedure will bring relief, there are several alternatives. Learn as much as you can about spinal surgery before the procedure. The more you know, the better your decision will be. So our role today is to answer most of your questions regarding spinal surgery. Today we have Dr. Lee, who is a leading doctor at Nazareth Hospital in Korea. He is going to discuss with us everything about spinal surgery from an experienced medical point of view. Hi women, before we start, please subscribe to our channel so the next time you'll be updated with our new releases. Hello, Dr. Lee. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet yes. you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. So we're here today at Nasaret Spine Center. Yeah. So what is the usual spiral disease that's treated in Nasaret Spiral Center? Yeah. Yes, mm. patients come to our Nasaret Spine Hospital because of the following diseases. Herniated nucleus pulopus, or HNP, being the most common case, followed by spinal stenosis degenerative disc disease, and osteoporotic compression fractures. So let's start with HNP. So let's start with HNP. So what is mm. HNP disease and what are the symptoms? HNP, or disc herniation for short, occurs when a disc in the vertebrae protrudes and directly compresses or stimulates a nerve root or spinal cord. It is a disease that mainly causes pain in the back or neck. Neurological symptoms such as paresthesia or motor paralysis, and in severe cases, difficulty urinating or defecating. So what are the us usual treatments for HNP? In general, disc diseases improve with conservative treatment alone. So the majority of patients get better with symptomatic treatment, physical therapy, drug therapy, or exercise therapy. But in severe cases, surgery may be required. So for surgery, is it obligatory? If the pain or the degree of paralysis becomes too severe, surgery is essential, particularly in the case of urinary or defecatory dysfunction. Surgery must be performed urgently because it is an emergency. So in Nasaret Spinal Center, how is the surgery performed? There are various types of surgeries, but the surgery we pursue at Nasaret Hospital is minimally invasive surgery and functional surgery. So if possible, we choose surgical methods utilizing endoscopy or microscopy to minimize wounds and speed up recovery. In severe cases, fusion surgery or artificial joint surgery may be performed. Uh, what is a spinal stenosis and does it have any symptoms? If surgery is not necessary, a simple procedure type treatment that calms the torn disc and washes away the surrounding inflammation may be considered. In the case of paralysis or very severe pain, minimally invasive surgery is used to minimize damage through endoscopy and microscopy. What is it exactly and what are the symptoms for spinal stenosis? Spinal stenosis refers to situations where the spinal canal narrows for a variety of reasons. A variety of symptoms manifest as the nerves inside become compressed. Such symptoms include decreased sensation in the lower body, pain, and gait disturbance, rather than back pain. The most common symptom is claudication, which becomes worse while walking and is relieved with rest. So in the case of spinal stenosis, what kind of treatments are available? In general, most patients tend to avoid surgery because it commonly occurs in elderly people. But surgery may even be required if it is well managed. However, since stenosis is often caused by thickening of joints or discs, it fundamentally requires surgery as a definite treatment method. As with herniated discs, minimally invasive surgery through endoscopy or microscopy would be the most helpful way to reduce spinal damage. Even if major surgery is required to remove bones or insert screws, 
Percutaneous surgery may be used, which is a method of performing surgery by making a small hole through the skin and passing a screw through it. If the degree of deformation or paralysis is severe, a significant proportion of vertebrae must be removed. So in this case, spinal fusion surgery may also be required. Since most patients are of old age, we opt for minimally invasive fusion surgery for their safety. Dr. Lee, what is a DGD mm, disease and mm. what are the symptoms of it? Degenerative disc disease, DDD, typically includes various neurological symptoms and pain caused by degenerative changes in the disc, followed by changes in the vertebrae, as such changes become more severe. When the disc is used for a long time, it collapses due to wear and tear. And as the bones around it thicken, various signs of pain and neurological symptoms appear. So, the treatment available for DDD? Some cases may be tolerated with pain control, but the fundamental treatment would still be surgery. Since surgery is usually risky, we at Nasera International Hospital first consider using artificial joints that can restore spinal function before considering surgery. It's a way of restoring the function of a collapsed or worn out disc through an artificial joint. So we prioritize artificial joint replacement surgery, which can normalize a patient's condition and restore the function of the spine. Even if fusion surgery may be required, we use minimally invasive surgery techniques that can minimize the damage. Through such methods, we hope for a safer and faster recovery. Dr. Lee, what is exactly the osteoporotic vertebral compression fracture? So, about osteoporosis, the bone is weakened due to a lack of bone ingredients, and compression fracture occurs in which the vertebrae is broken or crushed even under a slight impact. It is a disease associated with osteoporosis, so the main symptom is, of course, severe pain. The pain is so severe that it is impossible to get up and sit down. So most patients often lie motionless. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, so the symptoms are just pain, as you said? It's mostly pain, and if the patient moves around putting weight on the vertebrae, the vertebrae collapses. This causes damage to the nerves inside the spine, which may lead to paralogia or urinary dysfunction if it's severe. Mm. So in this case, what kind of treatments can a patient undergo? It would be necessary to treat osteoporosis, but since it is a fracture, the acute pain caused by the fracture should be treated first. Bones won't fuse quickly because of osteoporosis, so we choose to wait from three to four weeks until the bones fuse together while maintaining absolute bed rest and pain treatment. But if the pain is excruciating or the extent to which the bone is compressed is severe, surgical treatment may be indicated. Rather than performing open surgery, we instead use a very simple method of injecting an artificial substance called bone cement into the bone through a syringe. If the extent of the compression is quite severe, a balloon is inserted before injecting bone cement to stabilize the spine. This is a very useful and safe method because it allows the patient to move around immediately after the procedure. However, if the diagnosis is delayed or the spinal deformity is too severe, it can be treated with this simple injection method. So a major surgery may be required to realign the vertebrae and fix them with screws. Therefore, prompt diagnosis and early treatment is crucial. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for your time. Today, the doctor explained in details everything related to spinal surgery, including its indications and possible side effects. Thank you for joining us once again today at Cloud Hospital TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and respond to you as soon as possible.